I think that we are in an amazingly complex and mysterious universe and life. And the need to be able to predict and the need to be able to put everything in a box and define everything. We get into a mindset of where magic and passion and spirituality even is, uh, we can't even reach it anymore. But it's everywhere around us all the time. And everybody's gonna live a richer, fuller life when they're awake to that. You came up from the ground, from a million little pieces. You're a pretty human being. Yeah, you're a pretty human being. Oh. When it all comes crashing down, try to understand your meaning. No one has said it would be. Together with the tapestry of molecules Everything you need is here Everything you fear is here It's holding you up It just keeps holding you up When I was young, all the way up until graduation, I felt like an extreme outsider. I uh, had a lot of problems at school. I got picked on a lot. But then uh, I was in orchestra and we were playing these pieces and I remember just feeling like the world disappeared, that I felt so alive and I was finally communicating in a way or getting things out that I had never experienced before. Of course, that didn't help my popularity because I really got into it. So then all the kids were making fun of how <laughs> much I was moving during a song. And, and uh, but that, that, you just couldn't stop. You know, you just disappear for a while and you come out the other side and realize, whoa, what, what just happened? And so I started to write music and I used it as a tool to get out all the hurt and pain that I had inside, like a lot of young musicians do. And it just kind of stuck as something that I needed to do for personal medicine a lot. I think initially the fans that we attracted were people that liked just how weird and eccentric it was. So in my early days as a kid, the weirdo got made fun of. Suddenly showing all my weirdoness, people liked. Physicist and the mystic say there's no such thing as time. If God is now and everywhere, why is it so hard to find? One Since we've been doing this as a band, we recognize how many people were going through those same kinds of struggles and meeting some of our supporters too, of these young people that are really bright and intelligent and they've got something special and unique inside. And because of that, they're getting really beat down by their peers. So we try and 
make it really clear to these people you've got something really special like hang in there you're, you're gonna you're gonna make it she said worry about what you made to do not what you're made of there's a lot of fans that have become such adamant supporters that we just feel like really have our back and we bring them in as closely as we possibly can because we see them as our tribe and we depend on them for inspiration we depend on them for giving us the fuel to go out there and continue to write songs with a certain sort of intention and as long as we're feeling like we're like we're we're, we're helping people on some you know modest level uh this ship keeps going forward and all all of those fans are a part of the crew if life is a story we're meant to go through, then both me and you are the pages. I'll tell you a tale, and most of it's true. You see, I came here for you through the ages. Once there was a wanderer who wandered for you, and I wandered for you through the ages. Rainbows, tornadoes, volcanoes, typhoons, I made it through to be with you through the ages. We were born on a lightning bolt, grew up in the ocean, so traveled through 10,000 lives. So if ever I the magic around me Please take my hands from my eyes is a story we're meant to live through then both me and you are the pages I think Craig always had a vision for Cloud Cult to be um, more of an experience. Um, he never really wanted it to be just watching people play instruments. He wanted people to uh, have a, a more of a creative artistic experience.
I think the multi-instrumental dimensions that the band can go to, you know, being able to uh, play something more folky and roots-based with acoustic instruments and then go over and play with synthesizers and electric guitars and whatnot, um, just that potential to shift is uh, a fairly unique thing. I think it's nice as musicians, too, to be able to make that shift and yeah. not feel like we're stuck in one genre or one category. We can go and play as an orchestral quartet, and then we can go and play hard rock, and that is what makes it the most enjoyable for us. You put your whole self in, you put your whole self out, you put your whole self in, and you shake it all about. We have some rituals, especially right before we go on stage, we have to do the hokey pokey. There's two purposes for me. One, it loosens me up and gets the nerves moving through me. And two, it gives me a chance to connect eye contact with every person in the band and remember that we're going out there as a collective to do this really awesome thing. So no times of group meditation of sitting on <laughs> TM. Uh. That's just not us. The hokey pokey is very much a, a thing that, that we, we all think is super cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you know that I'm a happy man, but something in me's burning. Gotta push it, push it up, push it, push it up, push it up. So much frustration. <laughs> the moon coming back and said, I'll give you some. This is uh, Earthology Park. My husband, Craig, and I bought this uh, little piece of land through our nonprofit, uh, Earthology Institute. This is a public park for everybody to enjoy. Uh, we have a volunteer day here. So we have a lot of people out from the schools and from town and around the area that are helping us plant 300 trees today. We plant trees to help offset the greenhouse gases that we create on tour. We have a mad formula for trying to figure out how many trees we have to plant to absorb that. We get that total number, we multiply that by four with the assumption that a lot of the trees that we plant are actually not gonna make it. So today we're doing 300 and over the course of this year, we'll probably do around 5,000. Every single time you put one in the ground, you realize that it's gonna live longer than any of us standing here. And 
my great grandkids could come to this park someday and be walking by and climb up the branches of a tree that they didn't know that their great grandpa planted, you know? So every single one of these is very precious. When I was a kid, I spent a lot of time in a tree that was out back in Owatonna, Minnesota. It was always a place I could go to be just totally safe. And that's where I started to really wake up on the inside. So I felt like uh, when I graduated from high school, what I wanted to do was be a protector of those woods. Although music was calling me very, very strongly, um, I didn't know at the time how I could use music to do something positive for the planet. I got a job working as a tree surgeon, and I was all excited about it. Like, this is a dream come true since I was a kid. This is the best possible thing. And I went out on my first day, and it was all like, <laughs> just spraying trees with chemicals. There'd be this massive overprescription of, oh, that tree has a small ailment, so they would diagnose it as such and spray like crazy, but not pay attention to the fact that there's drift going on the neighbor dog. And uh, at the end of the day, I remember they gave me the sprayer thing, and there was a squirrel up there, and so the crew was like, just spray it, you know, it's not gonna hurt the squirrel. And I pulled the trigger, and completely against anything in my body. And I rode bike home that day and collapsed on the floor in our apartment and just and laid there and realized like, I have to learn how to stand up for what's right. You know, these small little things of needing to fit in, like I was just done with that. And I got out my notebook and I wrote on the page, steps to make a living doing music. And First step was a wedding DJ. <laughs> but it was that night that you said, I'm, I'm going to music. I was just, I had tried so many things in the environmental field and I, I felt like I need to design something where I'm gonna fit in and that's, that's our own business. And we're gonna sculpt it and we're gonna build every step in a way that fits what we believe in. And we're gonna make it work for ourselves and I don't care if anybody's gonna make fun of us anymore. <laughs>
I think back in the early, early days of writing, it was just a desperate need to get a whole lot of stuff out. Writing music brought me into a place of, like a lot of artists, where you finally have complete control of your reality and you can create what you need to create and express what you need to express and then set it aside and say, okay, I feel better. And just having done that, even if nobody's going to listen to it, just creating is all I need to do right now. Even to this day, that's the main uh, backbone of everything, is that that continued inherent need to create. But the ultimate goal with the music is to keep waking myself up and wake, uh, try and, you know, jiggle people a little bit <laughs> around us of like, hey, this is, this is an amazing place. Let's, let's just sit and, and, and feel the magnitude of the power and mystery of the great unknown right now and all relish the fact that maybe we can't put our finger on it, but we can all feel the energy of it right now. And let's go home with thanks and gratitude. Be good people. All the things you love, all the things that may hurt you, all the things you shouldn't do, and all the things you want to. Travel safely. Travel safely. Every first kiss, every crisis, every heartbreak, and every act of kindness. Travel safely. Travel safely. Every empire, every monument, every masterpiece, and every invention. Travel safely.
This program is made possible by the state's Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.